Welcome to Talk Purpose and Truth, shifting you into higher consciousness, a show that elevates, uplifts, and encourages listeners to grow, heal, awaken, and evolve. Eden and Kim include bold topics, interviews with inspiring guests, experts, and celebrities, intuitive readings, channeled messages, mental health awareness, and hot topics to expand your awareness. Tune in for unprecedented truth, authenticity, on-purpose discussions, and magical moments. Yes, and you talk more about that with us. And so I want to introduce Maria Mizzi, and I have known her for, I think it's been like 10 years. We met through Kyle Wilson. We've done so many events, workshops, masterminds, girls' nights, retreats. You name it, she was in one of my book projects, Inspirational Influencers, as an author. So she's a number one best-selling author. And she is a nutrition expert, fitness expert, trainer, everything. Wellness expert, speaker, and writer. And she's just really well-versed on feeling great. How to feel great in your skin, physically, emotionally, and mentally. So I want to welcome you, Maria. I'm so happy you're here. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. And I'm excited to be here on this day for you. One year celebration. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Congratulations. First of all, you know, we talk probably 20 times a day, (laughs) not necessarily on the phone, but a lot of texting. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that it was a year for you. And yeah, I'm proud of you. I don't know where life's going to take you. And I learned that, you know, I thought like, well, wait a minute, I don't, I don't have a problem. And no one was thinking I had a problem because I've never, I've never really been a drunk person or anything like that. And I learned that if addiction's in your family, and sometimes even if it's not, you could develop a problem just by little adding to have a drink more here, a drink more there, and it just becomes this habit and then it can become addiction. And mine was based on self-medicating because I couldn't find the right remedy and I was just desperate and in fight or flight mode. But I don't want to risk it by ever drinking again because I felt the grossest I've ever felt in my life. And so I ended up, you know, getting sober. Yeah. Well, proud of you, like I said. Thank you. (laughs) Um, Amazing. Yeah, it's a big deal. Um, so Maria, first question I wanted to know, just, can you tell us a little bit about how you got here in your purpose? Do you feel like you're in your purpose now and how, how did you get here? Yeah, definitely. I think our purpose is always evolving too, but I do feel like I'm in purpose right now and I did get here from kind of my own habits. So it's a great correlation. Um, my own habits were, I was working a lot and I was really unhealthy and I really didn't understand the concepts of nutrition so much when we hear so much about diets and eat this eat that but those things weren't helping me or fixing me either so i was really looking into other ways to feel better and lose the weight not feel so yucky like you um explained it kim and i I really was going to doctors i started going to you know different kinds of um, doctors who were more focused on the medical aspect of it and I wasn't getting the answers that I needed. Some, some of them actually told me, you know, you're just neglecting yourself. You're just going to have to do better. That was literally an answer from a doctor <laughs> and I was heartbroken after that moment and that was almost the switch up for me because it made me realize I was missing something in my life. I wasn't actually taking good care of myself. And I didn't know what the meaning of what that was. So I started off on the track of focusing on my body, like most of us would, where like you can see this on the outside. So I started focusing on the physical aspect of the body, more of the exercise, the fitness, and that started to work, but I still wasn't feeling clear. I still wasn't feeling like I was being nourished and I had the right energy that I needed. And that's when I got into the nutrition aspect of it after that, that just moving my body wasn't the answer. I had to focus on nourishing myself. As I started understanding the nourishment part of food, it brought me to what my real purpose is, is helping people nourish their whole self, not only their body, but also their mindset, their psychology, how they're thinking, and how they're taking care of themselves spiritually. 
whether it's in a community, if they have an environment, something that they do for themselves. And by bringing all that together, that helped me get better and feel good. And now I, I feel like my job is to make sure that I feel good all the time and to teach people others, other people how to feel good as well. Yeah, and it's, it's like a all goes together, mind, body, spirit, everything. And that's, that's like true healing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it yeah. took time for me to figure that out. I mean, I yeah. literally went through different evolutions of myself and it, like you said, purpose, it just gave my purpose a new meaning and kind of moved that track a little bit. Yeah, Maria, and I love how you're always very authentic with sharing like before and after photos and what, you know, what you felt like when you worked in corporate and also you're really good at helping people know how to get into kind of like a flow in life and feel that inner peace and wellness. How would you give audience members that feel really stressed right now and just feel kind of in a state of overwhelm, maybe from their lives, the world, the pandemic, what are some tips on feeling more in the flow and inner peace with life? Mm -hmm. there, there's so many, the, the kind of an endless answer, which is great. And I put that out going different things. I like to say start simple. So do something that we can do immediately. If you, if you want to start to feel better and feel good in your body, do something immediately. And the first thing you could do is maybe it's just moving your body a little bit more. Sometimes that helps. Uh, jumping, doing jumping jacks, doing a little bit of you know dancing, singing to your favorite song. Those are really simple things that you can do right away that will give you a quick turnaround so you can start to feel a little bit better fast. Those are my favorites that I kind of jump right into. And then you can go into a little bit of journaling and you can, I like to have an idea when I go into journal and I decide what I want to feel like. Maybe it's later, maybe it's next week, maybe it's next month. And I'll journal a visualization on how I want to feel so I can kind of lift myself up and start to feel better. And I use that with clients as well. Do you say, do you say I want to, or do you act as if when you're writing? Yeah, as if it's definitely in the present. I do mine in, in the present in the I am. I am, you know, acting, you know, feeling great. I am on this vacation. I am whatever it is that you are looking to feel. You really put yourself in that present place. Presence is really important. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so earlier Kim talked about that she feels like people, I think, are maybe programmed to thinking that they need habits and vices. So do you think that's true, that we really have to have those, or is there a healthier way? Mm -hmm. I think we do need habits, um, but I don't think it needs to be something that is a habit that served you. So habits are important, and I, I hear like people do say, you know, we need those negative habits and vices. I don't think we necessarily need them, but we do need to go through them so we can come out the other side a little bit better. You know, even in your example, Kim, what you went through, how you had this habit that wasn't really serving you, but now that you're on the other side of that, you are in a better place. You're clearer than you ever were. You're able to experience things differently. So sometimes the habit is there to teach us something, but I don't think we need them. Right. Well, what about people that that say, you know, I feel so stressed out, so I have to go do this, like shop or, you know, do something that is stress relieving. How would they shift that habit into something that is more positive and and I think part of it would be asking the person well how is it making you feel are you feeling guilty you know is it making you actually feel higher or lower because a lot of people will say like let's say it's eating I know that people it makes them feel better for 20 minutes but then they'll actually feel worse right exactly when, when we have a habit I found that it's important, especially in, in the way that I work with people, it's important to replace it with something. Most of the time I'm working with people in making better food choices. So if there's you know something that they're doing, and a lot of time, you know, it is it's food choices, it's the things that we're drinking. Sometimes, you know, even as you mentioned, we wanted that the wine to just kind of soothe that pain. Sometimes people pick chocolate, sometimes people pick a lot of times there's sugar, there's all different things. So we need to swap it out for something else. 
So if every night, you know, we're going home and we're eating ice cream or we're drinking a couple glasses of wine, we can't just decide to stop that and say, okay, I'm done and I'm not gonna do that anymore. This is what I'm gonna do from now on. We need to replace that habit with something else. So we need to find a better vice or a better habit to put in its place. Because there's always gonna be something that is going to need to be in that place with that habit. So we replace that with something else. And that's the first thing that I will do is we'll take, make a simple shift. So we'll swap it out. So every night, maybe somebody is doing this, what is something else that we can do? And what I found that has been really helpful in that is putting yourself in the place of that feeling before you get there. Because once you're there and you need that particular vice or that habit and you feel like, oh my gosh, I need this because I don't wanna feel this, this pain or this negative thing that's going on, we're gonna go to that vice that we know because we know that works. So in order to make sure we don't go back to that every time, I work with clients and we rehearse the situation. So typically when this happens, when you need this food, when you need this drink, what else can we put in that place? When you're feeling that way, why do you think you need that? What else can we do? What's something else that we can put there? So it's replacing it with something else. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I know that I'll look at somebody like there's some rock stars out there. Like, for example, Paul Stanley or Gene Simmons. Maria loves all this music, too. Yeah. From, from Kiss. And they both don't drink and never have. Now, I don't know about Gene. He maybe has had quite some vices through the years. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but Paul, I know he will post things like, um, oh, I just went on, like, a 20-mile bike ride. And that's, you know, making the endorphins go up. And so I think part of it is that argument in our mind, too. Like, oh, well we kind of just like prefer pass all of the practical things and go straight to the thing that's going to give us quick relief. And mm -hmm. so how, how do we best shift something like that? Like maybe something other than food, even like if it's something that someone's in the bad habit of every single day shopping on Amazon or even maybe the bad habit of when they get upset, they start saying bad words or, you know, something like that. Yeah, yeah, they, you know, that's an interesting idea. When if they're, if they have, it's the same concept because even if it's not food, if you're feeling that feeling of, hey, I need to go shopping to get away from the way I'm feeling or this negative thought, we need to practice something else in that place. What can we do instead of going out and going shopping? What are some things that serve you? What are some things that you enjoy? So for me, instead of going out and going shopping, I would say that was probably one of my vices many years ago that I would go out and go shopping because I amassed a lot of things that I didn't need. And that's when I realized that, hey, I don't need to go shopping yet that much. Why am I doing this? And it was soothing a way I didn't want to feel, that I didn't want to feel that negativity. So I sat down and said, okay, instead of going shopping because I really don't enjoy going, but it's a habit and I keep doing it and I keep buying things, what else can I put in its place? So I found other ideas when I wasn't feeling that negative feeling or feeling like I needed to escape that I would rather do. And I made a list of those. So, you know, for me, for me, a lot of times it's doing something that is movement. It's getting outside, getting outside in nature. So finding something else that you can shift that energy to, that thought process to of what you usually do. I know I said that twice already, but I found that that has been one of the, the crucial turning point for most people. Yeah, I feel like that can also apply to, well, it can apply to anything, but like that OCD, yeah. OCD thoughts, things like that. Okay. Yeah, sure. And then like speaking of that, so I know it's pretty common for people to be hard on themselves. Kim and I do that a lot, especially with the weight fluctuations, like body image, things like that. Um, even on bad hair days and <laughs> we don't look our best. There's, you know, I guess basically it's all about what we look like on the outside. That's mm -hmm. really what we focus a lot on. And we have all this critical thinking. So um, what's your advice ab about accepting ourselves, loving ourselves more? Mm -hmm. Yes. Such an important thing and such a difficult thing to do. I know. That's right. The, the first thing I would say to do is you really need to honor where you are and how you're feeling. So if you're 
not feeling well or you don't feel good in your body or you're looking at yourself in, in a certain way, just kind of notice that and observe that and just honor that particular situation and how you're feeling so you can start to move on to that. And then come into the present and really just ask yourself the, these things that you're thinking, are they really true? This is a really important thought to think because especially and when we're thinking about our body and what we're looking at, we don't feel our best and our hair isn't going the way it's supposed to. Just really ask yourself and ask it kind of like in a strange way. Is, is it really true? Is it really true that this is the worst hair day I've had ever in my life and I can't be seen by anybody? No, that, that's not yeah. really true, right? Really kind of bring it back down to, you know, a surface level that we can kind of work with and then allow yourself to find something that you do love about yourself and bring that back into focus and take away the the negativity that's right in front of you that you're saying about yourself push that away and bring something positive about yourself right in that that clarity of space i like that yeah yeah i have not i have not been doing that that way i like that i was it's interesting because i was reading cameron diaz had an interview recently and she was talking about that, like body image and aging and all of these. And she said she used to be way more obsessive and that now that she's almost 50, she's gotten in the habit of less and less looking in the mirror for long periods of time. Because she said that she would stare in the mirror and then eventually find things that she was critiquing instead of just like glancing in the mirror and going, I love myself. Okay, I'm good. I don't need to obsess, you know, yeah. and I'm like that. And just, you know, getting in that moderation, I mean, I'm all about being glamorous and upkeep, but in moderation so that you're not obsessing. And then a lot of times women end up not even looking like themselves, but they obsess so much. And I think it's an epidemic. And I think one of the things that is helpful is actually, you know, we end up, a lot of us, I think most of us end up looking at people in the media if we... Google celebrities with no makeup or, you know, celebrity photos, you know, in, in a bikini or whatever, you start going, okay, you know, she has cellulite or, oh, she has wrinkles or she doesn't look as glamorous without makeup. And you start going, okay, they're normal too. They have airbrushing, you know, they have a lot more money to get procedures done or whatever. And so I think it starts to make it that everyone's human and that we're all imperfectly perfect, you know, and um, had, to, had to do a plug for imperfectly perfect campaign. But, just, you know, um, but yeah, so I, I think that I love that what you're saying, because we all have something that it, it's very hard to not at least find one thing that you love about yourself, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and when we start that, we can typically find more. You know, and, and that's how we, we can increase our own, you know, vibrational frequency by just seeing and thinking about those positive things in ourselves. And sometimes if we can't find it in ourselves, we could ask somebody else and they'll probably give us a list because it's much easier for them to share something about us than it is about ourselves. But then uh, I know for me, I probably wouldn't believe them. <laughs> <laughs> Eat it. <laughs> Well, 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 there's another thought. There's another belief system. There's another You're right. idea there. <laughs> You're old. Up until now. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, we, we've talked about this on the show before, and I know you've done this, Maria, but Jessica Smith was on our show like a year and a half ago and um, talking about could you make a list of 100 things you love about yourself. And I have found, you know, even in the last year or so working with clients that a lot of people have trouble even making 10 and usually I'll help them along. I'll go, well, what about this? What about this? What does your husband say? Or what does your friend say? Like you just said, Maria, but I think everyone listening, that's a great way, you know, get that list done of at least, you know, at least like 30 things to eat in, uh, that, <laughs> that I have yet to do that. I yep. did. I think I need to do it again, but I did do it at that time when Jessica challenged us. But I think that if we constantly remind ourselves, then our mind will start for those things. Is that true, Maria? Absolutely. The, the, the reminder is, is so important. 
absolutely because it's like a practice you're playing that record over and over right so yeah. now oftentimes we're playing negativity over and over in our head uh -huh. you know, how many, we have like i don't know so many thoughts a day and most of them are negative about ourselves and we're playing the same one so if we can switch that and start to say positive things about ourselves how much better will we feel yeah <laughs> Thank you for listening to Talk Purpose and Truth Podcast. Find out more at talkpurposeandtruth.com. And follow us at Talk Purpose Truth on Instagram and Facebook. <laughs>